My name is Mike Balboni, and I am the chairman of the Cyber and Physical Security Committee for the New York Power Authority. I'd like to welcome my fellow trustees, uh, Chairman John Como, uh, Chairman Eugene, I'm sorry, uh, Trustee Eugene DeCandry, Trustee Tracy McGibbon, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. We, uh, first, first order of business is to a, adopt the agenda. Could I please have a motion to adopt the agenda? So, so move. Second. Second. Right. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 The agenda is adopted. I would now like to move pursuant to Section 104 of the Public Officers Law <clears throat> to uh, have an executive session to discuss matters of security. So May I have a motion? Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we will now conduct executive session. We'll be back pretty shortly. Thank you. We want to have a motion to uh, resume the meeting in open session. So I'll make that motion. Thank Second. you, Greg. And uh, all, in all in favor? favor? Aye. 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 All right, now. and now Mike. We're back at the, uh, uh, the committee meeting for physical security and crisis management. I want to welcome you all back. Uh, today, the security committee heard about NIPA's security posture and the response to COVID. NIPA continues to support the electric sector in New York State's integrated response to this new normal. Uh, we also discussed a report from the World Health World or Economic Forum on cyber resiliency in the electric ecosystem, and in, including a report that NIPA uh, is a use case that recognizes NIPA's effective oversight and enterprise cyber risk with defined organizational governance and prioritization of holistic cyber risk management. NIPA will remain focused on our resilient and secure operations. And then finally, we heard about a partnership uh, that we developed with Siemens we're very excited about for an industrial cybersecurity center of excellence to continue to innovate. So, uh, Mr. Chairman. You can uh, flip it to Casey to uh, and Larry to uh, give us an update on uh, the COVID response. Right. And then you'll All be right. able to, re then you'll be able to give your report again in uh, full board. Very good. Larry, Katie, can it? Yep, Larry, okay. you got it. Good morning. Um, good morning. So if we're ready to go, I will start with the COVID response. I wanted to thank you guys for a few minutes today. Uh, I appreciate your time. So I want to be respectful and give you a brief update on NIPA and Canal's uh, COVID response as part of this morning's update. I'm sure you all know and are all very familiar with the current COVID crisis and the ongoing response. So just a brief update on some of the NIPA and Canal's external support efforts to New York State that happened during the COVID response. Ut utilizing uh, the incident command structure, NIPA and Canal's established specific goals and objectives of our response. These goals and objectives included placing a premium on employee safety and health, reducing density, working effectively remotely wherever and whenever possible, uh, ensuring continuity of, co continuity of operations, this was largely in part to successfully implementing our sequestration plan at all of the NIPA sites and safely supporting a phased restart. While doing all that, uh, it, through a collaborative effort, I want to make sure I point out that this was a collaborative effort between crisis management, HR, canals, we were able to provide significant support to New York State. Uh, for over 46 days, we had 75 employees supporting the Department of Labor call center. We have over 60 trained NIPA uh, and Canals employees as New York State contact tracers. The crisis management group supported the New York State Office of Emergency Management Essential Function 1. This is the uh, department that is focused on transportation and supported the Anthony Wayne drive through testing area. Uh, this was a joint effort. We included, uh, we had support from many members of the Canal Corporation. We had over 53 employees for 124 days on site continuously at essential function number one transportation in Albany. Um, we had a leadership role. So two members of the NIPA crisis management department were the leads of the specimen serology transportation task force. That task force shipped greater than 50,000 critical COVID test specimens from all across the state to Wadsworth lab in Albany and coordinated the shipping of over a million test kits to over a thousand nursing homes in New York State. 
the picture on the screen there is a photograph taken from a drone of the Anthony Wayne drive through testing area. Just for good measure, uh, as you know, we've talked about in the past, NIPA has an active drone program. Uh, when the Anthony Wayne operations requested a drone photography, NIPA was able to respond, provide the drone, the drone pilot and co-pilot, and the photography. So really full service support by NIPA and Canal. So while keeping the operation running, while keeping the employees safe, uh, we, were, we were able to provide significant support to New York State, uh, which is ongoing at this point, not necessarily in as full uh, a mode as right now because of the needs of the state and the, and the state of the crisis, but currently ongoing. So I appreciate a few minutes to just give you the update on sort of not the traditional COVID update, but the update on how NIPA and Canal sort of rallied to support. Thank you. All right, uh, next slide, please. All right. Um, thank you, Larry, for detailing our integrated uh, state response to COVID. Good morning. I'm Casey Carnes, uh, VP of Critical Secure Services and Chief Information Security Officer. Um, I'd like to just discuss how you know the implementation uh, went to remote work. Our teams were enabled by you know NIPA's infrastructure and our security posture uh, supporting this new normal. NIPA's uh, information technology systems, processes, and security were able to support the migration to remote work immediately. To be honest, our security posture has not significantly changed since we had resilience as an existing benchmark for architecture and security. What made the transition really seamless was part of preparedness of our technologies and NIPA's digital worker vision. Continued response, training, and exercises with our integrated security and a strategic looking forward plan allowed that quick response. There are new dangers in which we must continue to stay focused on, yet they do not significantly change our risk profile, but only add new risks and concerns. This will remain a key focus for us. Obviously, the new threats of phishing, also the worker being in remote locations, and requests for access or impersonation uh, are continued in the environment. How are we balancing against those risks? We have security shifting to uh, focused on data and access and remote incident response. So one thing that we did do uh, quickly is we deployed what's called an endpoint detection and response capability. Uh, so as all of our devices left our uh, internal protected networks in the traditional security model that we've had, we deployed a quick response uh, integration to the remote desktop so we could see those devices off our network perform security incident response and still control that risk in this new normal. Uh, we're also gonna to continue to focus on the awareness of our staff, increasing their technical fluency and the security awareness in all roles. Next slide, please. So I'd like to note some, I think, exciting news. Uh, that are focused on NIPA's governance and oversight processes that were recently highlighted in a use case from the World Economic Forum. It was a cyber resilience in the electricity ecosystem, and it was a playbook for boards and cyber officers. Uh, NIPA was blessed to be able to participate in the working group on this, and NIPA was actually highlighted in a use case in the release document. Uh, that use case highlights our exercise of effective oversight of enterprise cyber risk and resilience creating the right organizational governance and assessing and prioritizing our cyber risk management. So if you look at this committee in partnership with our enterprise risk management committee and our NIPA secure committees, all of those are integrated in ways to escalate risk, identify risk and have conversations to properly understand risk tolerance uh, for NIPA and our operational actors. One other thing that is a uh, you know, that I want to continue to uh, speak to is the great recognition of, you know, our leadership in this industry around this, and we are continuing to assist in clear and actionable ways around cyber governance and risk monitoring, especially with our support to the industry and the sector around COVID. The last piece of significant news I would like to share is NIPA and Siemens is announcing a new collaboration to develop an industrial cybersecurity center of excellence. It's a first of its kind cybersecurity monitoring research and innovation center that will focus on detecting and defending against cyber attacks in critical infrastructure. This will leverage Agile Lab, NIPA's advanced grid laboratory for energy. 
This will establish a test bed and demonstration pilots using technologies from Siemens and others in both laboratory and real, real world settings. NIPA is excited to be a leading in this partnership in order to grow and focus our collaboration and innovation to ensure our security. Uh, there will be more to come on that, but we definitely uh, wanted to share that with everybody. Uh, and we will continue to build that partnership and support where we can go to help the industry and New York State and our partners and our customers in securing their infrastructure. That is what I have. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? All right, no votes are necessary for this item. Um, thank you very I'm much. I'll just offer my kudos, uh, Mike, to Casey, Larry, Rob, the entire uh, team for the incredible work that's been done over the last several months and uh, how well uh, positioned we were and remain to uh, you know, navigate uh, the new order. Um, so kudos to uh, the entire organization. Kudos to you and appreciate your leadership uh, for, you know, uh, frankly, setting the pace and uh, a very appropriate tone uh, uh, relative to, you know, a, a key risk and key issue uh, for our organization and any. So, again, team very, very uh, well done under uh, uh, incredibly challenging uh, times and circumstances. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you know, Casey and the team have really worked very hard to protect me. The Agile Labs and the innovation, it's, it's, as you refer and your mandate to all of us is to lean forward exactly what this team has been doing on this incredibly right. critical. So uh, I'd like to, uh, there is a consent agenda, which consists of uh, meeting <clears throat> minutes that's before the committee for adoption. I'd like to ask you for a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, the date of the next meeting of the Cyber and Physical Protection Committee will be uh, determined shortly. I'd like to ask for a motion to close this committee meeting. So moved. All right, all right. second. Uh, all in favor, please by, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 The meeting is con con concluded. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you.